is going to hate it. Really? From theme park districts to ethics oversight, Governor DeSantis' appointment of Glenn Gelzine as Orange County's election supervisor sparks debate on the intertwining realms of governance and private interests. Let's unpack this implication. <laughs> Governor Ron DeSantis appointed Glenn Gilzine as the new supervisor of elections for Orange County, Florida, succeeding retired Bill Cowles. Gilzine's prior roles include serving on the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District and as chairman of the Florida Commission on Ethics. The appointment raises questions about Gilzine's simultaneous responsibilities and comes amidst preparations for the upcoming presidential preference primary. Let's go, Joel. Well, you can't make this shit up. Here is one of the most prominent African-American Republicans in Central Florida. Uh, Glenn Galzine, uh, oh, while well, he was in charge of uh, the Urban League, was uh, an inspiration to a lot of us Republicans because he's, he's very conservative. He's very involved in the community. He brings a he brings a, compa a, a compassion that our party lacks at times, but when you meet Glenn, you'll, you'd understand why he's given so many responsibilities by the governor because he's just that guy that really understands the community. So I think this, David, is a good choice, mm -hmm. and I sure. think that when I – you know, I don't respond a lot on social media unless it's directly – within our network okay but when i hear somebody on linkedin uh like anna eskimani attack the governor by using glenn gilzine it frustrates me because this is a gentleman uh and he really tries to do what's right and if he makes a mistake he'll make a mistake but he's going to be trustworthy enough to take our elections and guide us through them and i hope he runs i hope he takes and breaks the norm and says, you know what, I like this job enough where I want to be the candidate because Republicans would have a very good shot of winning with Glenn because of who he is and how he cross-pollinates the parties. Well, first of all, congratulations to Supervisor Gilzine. Um, a great appointment by the governor, as um, your Republican conservative friends would say. Uh, on the political side, uh, Democrats, they definitely have their hands full um, with the appointment of uh, Glenn. Uh, my concern is, is this an appointment just to hold the seat until someone new is elected, or will Supervisor Gilzine actually file for the position, qualify for the position, and run for the position in November? Um, because I, I just don't – I see the appointment um, as a, a good appointment by the governor. Um, Glazine is a close confidant of the governor. Um, so the governor will want someone that he can trust to come into Orange County and, you know, do their, you know, election integrity thing, whatever. Um, my concern is, is that – the supervisor, is, he's, he's got a lot of balls in the air here. He, he's struggling a lot of balls in the air. Uh, the, you well, know, yeah, the, the, Glenn has a lot of balls. Okay. <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, his role on the uh, Central Florida Tourism District, uh, his controversial role on the Ethics uh, Commission. Um, well, he's no longer on the Ethics right, Commission right. because he didn't realize he should have. Right. The lawyers should have 
advised he, him correctly, but exactly, you know, he there was, was run. Little, it, there was controversy it, there, it, so a little controversy. And you know, if, if, if will he have both feet in, you know, the tourism district and the supervisor's um, office at a time where both are needing quite a lot of attention. And um, and how again? How long will he stay? Is this just so, another another bullet point on his resume? The well, it's definitely board, it's definitely the enough. Actors commission. <laughs> da, 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 yes. da, da. So you know, they, I would love to see a little bit consistency and see someone in that position for the long term. And, and let me speak to the Democrats mm -hmm. on this. Um, there's uh, so many Democrats that are running for this position. And if I was the chair, if I had some, you know authority in the Florida Democratic Party, I, I'll bring everyone together to say, hey, let's let's all rally around one candidate and just and just try to get that Democrat elected because if the supervisor does run for office, I I think despite the demographics, mm -hmm. uh, more Democrats than Republicans in Orange County, I think he will have a good chance of winning the seat. Oh, I think Glenn has a great chance of winning. But here's where I want to talk to Democrats. Were you really, was Bill Cowell such a bad supervisor of elections that the place is so bad off that you can't have a Republican step in and maintain what you had? Oh, that's right. It must have been a shambles. Bill Cowles must have been the worst supervisor of elections, the way you're talking, because you're basically saying that nobody can step in and finish this term. I mean, literally, you're basically saying that Bill Collins did such a shitty job that the governor putting in a Republican is going to disrupt well, what happened. Well, Bill left because he wanted to make sure that the next supervisor of elections, this is just um, hearsay, would would be ready to pass on the torch and, and prepare. He left because he wanted to retire and he wanted to well, yes, not live in the state, that. not live in the state of Florida. His family, he wants to follow his uh, children uh, off to the where, where right. they go. He wants to right. be with his grandchildren. Right. Look, the man was he's tired. He's tired exactly. Thirty four years. Look, he's tired. I, I will now get beat up by my party because listen, I think Bill Cowles did an outstanding job. I think, I so think that he worked really hard at trying to keep a balance and not very often can you walk in and talk to a Democrat in a position and not know he's a Democrat. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. if you didn't see the D on the ballot, this guy truly knew how to talk to both sides. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're going to get with Glenn Gelzine, which scares the Democrats to death. I would love to see it if it's more than just eight months or how, how long it would be, you know, until the next supervisor of elections is sworn in. I would say that the Republican Party here in Orange County needs to rally behind him, push him, get him to do the right thing and run for this position. This is not, this is not Governor, this is not Governor Scott, where he puts somebody in last minute and tells him, I don't expect you to run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will not give you this appointment if you're going to run. Mm -hmm. And that's where Scott was. It's hard to turn down uh, or to walk away from a $400,000 job at the uh, Central Florida Tourism District and take on a $200,000 job. But, you know, I'm, glad, I'm sure that, you know, Glenn is doing okay. Uh, but there's one thing I do want to know about us, about us, uh, your political innovators. We called this. Of course we did. We <laughs> said months ago when Supervisor Cowles said that he was retiring, who are – who was on our leaderboard? Uh, and Glenn Glazine was on top of it. Uh, both of us. I, we both called this one. And this is see, this is what political innovation is all about: knowing who your players are in your community, knowing who the person was that was best. And what did we say? Our only hesitation on Glenn was the the amount of money he was being paid, and to walk away from that to do this job. Exactly. But this is a lifetime. This is a lifetime job if you do it right. Agree. I mean, if you don't step on your toes like some people in other counties have, <laughs> um, yeah. this is it. This this could be a lifetime job because it's a trust job, and I trust that Glenn Gelzine will do a great job, even if he only holds it for eight months. But I I would urge him to run, and I would say that 
you know, Jay in Washington, I'm going to plug us. Jay in Washington's ready to scour the entire the entire county for you because, look, there's way too many Democrats in the race, and I don't think any of them are Bill Cowles quality. That's a good point. It, you, there has to be a balance between public service, political allegiance, and institutional integrity, and hopefully Supervisor Gilzine will be able to do that. The voters need that. Orange County needs that. Florida needs that. Uh, I do have my concerns. However, we'll give Supervisor Gilzine a chance. I've seen all the you know posts on social media from various Democrats. You know, stop the whining. Do what you need to do to elect the Democrat to the position. Get out there, register people. That's another story. Democrats are getting their butts kicked statewide as far as national, uh, as far as uh, registration. But that's a different story. But Democrats, do what you need to do to take back the seat. That's all. You would think there were no Democrats in Lake County or any of the other these Republican counties because they just keep growing and growing and growing. You, that's where you need to be. Right. You need to be changing minds if you're going to do anything. But you know what? The Republican Party is doing the right thing. We're registering voters. That makes it easier for us to predict who's going to vote for us because mm -hmm. uh, you can't just assume they're going to. Super Tuesday was a very interesting thing, and Indeed. I can't wait to have a conversation about that. But thank you, David. Uh, Glenn, please, I, I'd like to have a chance to talk with you. I'm going to congratulate you personally. And uh, – Look, if you're out there and you disagree with us, please make your comments. Let us know, uh, especially like if you're working in the newspaper because you guys are silent on these issues. You know, you guys like to beat them up. <laughs> I, Scott Maxwell said something <laughs> recently. I'm like, okay, where were you a long time ago? But that's a, that's a different story. Our beef with the Randall Signal, that's a different story. But please like, please share. Please make your comments known and make us a better – company. We are your political innovators here at Jay in Washington. Also, uh, I want to plug uh, the new book that David uh, uh, has uh, allowed me to put out under the Jay in Washington network. Uh, it's uh, history in, in verse, and uh, please, we'll have uh, it up and ready to go with all the links and everything, but please take a look at it, $9.99 uh, for the first month here if you get it. But if you don't get it early, it's going to go up in price. So thank you very much. Thanks.